complexity uh, has been favorable to the National Football League. I think that uh, I feel we're on an equal basis with the National Football League today. And I think that uh, as soon as the American Football League wins a Super Bowl game, then there isn't going to be this question. That was Lynn Dawson in the summer of 1968. He predicted the American Football League needed only a Super Bowl victory to answer the question whether or not the AFL was ready for full partnership. After two Super Bowl championships, the answer is clear. Some of the events that helped create the success story of the American Football League were a $36 million television contract, transforming the bankrupt New York Titans into the Jets. Expansion with Miami in 1966, followed by Cincinnati in 1968. And finally, two consecutive Super Bowl victories. Many people may have forgotten that it was Lamar Hunt who began the ball rolling with the idea to form a second professional league back in 1959. Well, I suppose that I uh, had several motivations for the starting of the AFL. First of all, I uh, have always been a football nut. Uh, maybe a sports nut would be a better description. And uh, I felt that uh, the city of Dallas uh, should have a pro football team. Dallas was my home. And uh, the growth of the game was just becoming a, the game itself, uh, as played by the National Football League, was just becoming a major factor in American sports. And uh, I made an effort to get a National Football League team for Dallas, tried to purchase an existing team, uh, talked to them about expansion, and to make a long story short, uh, that led to the formation of the American Football League. Mar and I met uh, Mr. Hallis in Chicago, and he tried very hard to persuade us not to uh, start this new league, that it would be very costly, it wouldn't be good for pro football. Wayne Valley, the colorful president of the Oakland Raiders, commented at that time that he thought that instead of being known as the executive committee of the league, the club owners should better be called the foolish club. 1960, 61, and even 62 were very grim years. It appeared that we were never going to get our head above water, and but we were determined to stay with it. Denver franchise at one time indicated they were almost ready to throw in the towel. The, in 1962, the New York Titan franchise uh, had financial problems and declared bankruptcy. And Every obstacle that one could put in front of another was put in front of the American Football League, and yet our growth continued. I would say that there were two turning points in the American Football League's growth, uh, which were the keys to our making it. One was the uh, announcement of our new five-year television contract with the National Broadcasting Company. This was in January of, or February of 1963. This was vital because it ensured us the income to be able to compete against the National Football League for players, which was, as I said, vital. Uh, the second happening took place a little earlier, uh, and it was the advent of the Sonny Werblin group into the ownership of the New York Titans. Uh, they changed the name to the Jets at that point, and although they had to play one more year in the polo grounds and still drew very slim crowds, the advent of Sonny and his show business knowledge, his entertainment field knowledge, was a key to the growth in the New York market, which later burgeoned once the team got into Shea Stadium. While the executives were solving their administrative problems, the players were busy introducing exciting wide open football. In the early years, the long pass dominated play. Cookie Gilchrist was one of the league's first power runners. Offense was the name of the game, and Cookie's explosive style was making headlines. As the league matured, so did the defenses, and Braun gave way to finesse. The biggest weakness was on pass defense. Babe Farrelly, who was quarterbacking in the AFL from the very beginning, saw this weakness diminish as the league came of age. I think the league has certainly come a long way. I can think back when the league first started, uh, I think our biggest problem were, was the fact that the defensive backs weren't uh, 
well, really too sharp. All you had to do is go back and throw the long bomb, and 50% uh, of the time you could probably complete it. As far as a quarterbacking standpoint is concerned, uh, we did a lot more checking off and automaticing because we had a lot more blitzing in those days. I think we have less blitzing now, and we settled down to more of a, a standard straight uh, type of defense where uh, it's man against man. It was man against man up front as well. Houston Antwine remembers the days when just strength told the story. The first couple of years, uh, as a defensive tackle, it was, it was relatively simple. Uh, you just beat the guy in front of you to a pulp. We'll be back with more Distant Replay in a moment. The defensive backs were learning fast. One of the league's best was and still is Johnny Robinson of the world champion Kansas City Chiefs. I think there's a knack to intercepting a pass. For instance, uh, uh, sometimes you pick up clues from reading the quarterback's eyes or when he's getting ready to deliver the ball and things like this that, uh, that seem to, to help a uh, defensive back come up with the interception. But I think uh, the big pass rush is probably the most vital thing, uh, making the quarterback make that mistake, throw a little early, uh, throw a little off step. And fortunately, our big boys uh, on our club give us that big pass rush, and of course, that certainly Certainly helps a uh, defensive back as much as anything. As more emphasis was placed on the defensive secondary, the overall style of the league took on a new look. They called it sophistication. The defensive stars, like Johnny Robinson, were finally in the headlines. As a league, there were many teams that developed their own individual personalities. San Diego always seemed to burn up the track with blistering speed in the backfield. Balancing the attack was the passing combination of John Hadel to Lance Allworth. San Diego proved to be one of the most exciting teams in the American Football League. The Oakland Raiders developed one of pro football's most devastating passing attacks. The philosophy was to utilize the pass-catching talents of the running backs as well as the flankers and ends. Defensively, the opposition never knew who was going to wind up with the football. The maximum use of backs as pass receivers gave the Raiders a look all their own and had coaches in both leagues taking notes. In New York, the Jets became the toast of the town as Joe Namath demonstrated the art of reading defenses. The Jets' balanced attack eventually brought the AFL its first Super Bowl championship. Kansas City coach Hank Stram introduced an imaginative multiple offense with a moving pocket. This strategy allowed quarterback Lynn Dawson more time to throw the ball and limited the enemy's pass rush. The moving pocket proved very effective against the NFL Vikings in the fourth Super Bowl game. Many believe that Kansas City offense is the offense of the future in professional football. The conflict between the leagues was never more evident than in the battle for players. Billy Cannon was the first college star to join the AFL. Billy came to us under strange circumstances. Uh, he admitted to me that he signed the contract with the Los Angeles Rams. And uh, I agreed to double the uh, salary that he was to receive with, from the Rams. And then the Los Angeles Rams uh, filed a lawsuit against Billy, which naturally we had to defend him and uh, had to defend him in the Los Angeles courts and uh, won the case uh, uh, on the basis that uh, the, the judge said that uh, he thought Billy should have the, 
the maximum amount of money and we'd offer him the maximum amount so he should play with the Oilers. And we got our first superstar. Lance Allworth also chose the American Football League. He almost signed with the NFL and didn't know it. When I went with San Diego, I was drafted by San Francisco. And uh, I was drafted number two by uh, San Diego and number one by San Francisco. And it's really funny because I never really talked uh, money with San Francisco. Al Davis just uh, did a fantastic job of selling me on the San Diego Chargers. And uh, I met with him, and uh, when I did sign, uh, uh, we were playing in the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. And of, co of course, uh, you, you can't sign if you're playing in a bowl game. And uh, I was going to sign under the goalpost.